Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage. I'm Leslie Watkins and today is Watercolor Wednesday. Today I'm going to be working with these beautiful echinacea flowers. They just opened this past week and they're already putting on a spectacular display and of course the butterflies and the pollinators just love them. If you are a nature gardener and you want to provide um, seeds and pollen for the wildlife, this is one of the very best flowers that you can grow. It's also known as the purple cone flower. And so if you look at the shape of this one, you can see that it's kind of a cone shape. That's where it gets its name. They're very easy to grow and you will bring lots of bees and butterflies to your garden. And then later when they form the seed heads, you're going to get a lot of uh, seed eating birds, um, particularly the ones that are looking for seeds during the winter because you can let those seed heads persist and you'll have a really nice natural source of food for the winter birds. So that's what we're going to be painting today. And I'm just checking my settings. I wanna make sure that you can see and hear me all right. And that's looking pretty good. All right. I'm sorry I came on a little bit later today, but I got involved with a phone call with my brother who I haven't talked to for a while and the time just got away from me. I mean, I think I think we were talking for about two hours. Has that ever happened to you? I thought I had plenty of time and uh, we could have still gone longer. Anyway, it was, it was great to talk with him. So this, if you uh, are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. I've been doing a series of paintings in my handmade garden journal. So this is the journal that I made and it features a hand painted cover and it has some sort of gold accents. And inside I have my favorite watercolor bound into place. This is the back pocket. So this holds some extra sheets of paper. And then I've been doing a number of uh, floral sketches. And today I'm going to, I'm going to keep, this is the, um, the end of one signature and the beginning of the next. This book has two signatures. So this is the, the center. I'm going to save that for a different day and I'm just going to move ahead to this next spread. And my idea for the echinacea is to have the design go on both sides of the bottom of the paper and then have some sort of close-ups of some of the flowers and then other flowers going off into the distance. So um, as always, I'm just going to show you how I get started. So I'll do one flower over in, in this area. So let me get this zoomed in so that you'll be able to see a little bit better. I'm also using just three colors, yellow, red, and blue. These are professional watercolors and you can learn much, much more about my watercolors, my materials, my setup and all that kind of stuff on my website at dandeliancottagedesign.com where you can subscribe to my newsletter notes from Dandelion Cottage. And so please do that and uh, you will be notified of upcoming classes, workshops, and special deals. So um, I'm going to get grab a pencil. So I'm just using a number two uh, soft pencil, just a regular old yellow pencil, okay? And, um, and that's really all you need to get started. Three colors and a pencil and some nice paper. So this, this paper is hot press paper and it's uh, 90 pounds, so it's, it's sort of thin paper. But I find that the 90 pound paper works beautifully in my sketchbooks. And I have a lot of uh, videos on my YouTube channel at Dandelion Cottage Design where you can see 
um, the beginning of how I make some of these sketchbooks and you'll also be able to find the playlist for um, this series of paintings that I'm doing um, in this particular book. So there's a lot, of, a lot of videos up that you can watch the playlist for. All right, so I think that is the beginning. Um, I see Sandra. Hi, Sandra from California. I bet it's pretty hot there too. It's, it's actually cooled off a little bit today. It's, it's a beautiful sunny day and not nearly as oppressive as it has been. All right, so I think you can see this okay. I'm gonna be working in this area. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna grab one of these flowers. So here is my specimen. And you can see the stunning color that is and how beautiful and rich that center of the flower. And it has like, you can see the beginning of the orangish pollen forming, forming there. And then the back of the flower looks like this and the leaves well this isn't a very good leaf let me find a better leaf to show you I'm gonna pull this one off so here's here's the shape of the leaf okay and this is this is a little one the leaves get much bigger but you you get an idea of the kind of a spear shape leaf that that is and you can see it has the center vein all right, and then it has some sort of lateral veins. I hope you can see that. That's a little bit better, I think. And, um, and so when I hold it in the light a certain way, you can see how the shadow begins to um, form. Um, I think I hear the lawnmowers coming. I'm just gonna jump up real quick and close the door so you don't have to hear that lawnmower. I'll be right back. They've caught me by surprise. Usually they come on Thursday, but I guess um, the weather forecast must be that it's going to be rainy tomorrow, so they're coming today. Alrighty. These, these uh, live videos are um, scheduled for 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesdays and Thursdays. I'm a little bit late today because of that phone call, but um, I try to schedule them around the lawnmowers, but sometimes they surprise me. So this is basically a very simple flower. If you think about it, you've got this big round center, and then you have all these beautiful petals springing off from it in every different direction. So um, I'm going to begin with the center. So I'm just, this is, this is a really great one to begin with if you're just starting out. So there's, there's, and I know it's very light. Let me see if I can zoom you in a little bit more and you can see something. So I'm just starting off very lightly and then I'm going to begin just guesstimating the approximate shapes and directions of a few of the prominent petals. I'm not drawing every single one, okay? I'm just sort of getting my bearings here, getting the overall shape. And then as the, as the painting progresses, I'll be able to tighten up more and more on my drawing. But at this point, I just want to get an overall impression. So don't worry about getting everything exact. Just, you know, make your lines lightly, start lightly, and, and try not to go over and over the same lines and make them too heavy. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure I get my stem, and I want to make sure that that stem is coming up and ending right where the center of my center of the flower is, okay? So even though you can't see it underneath these petals, it's still traveling up underneath there. So that's, that's really all the 
all the information I need at this point to begin my painting. All right, and I'm going to be starting out with my larger brush. Okay, so I've got two brushes. This is a number seven. This is a number four. So they're relatively small brushes and they are natural sable. That's my preference. And I'm gonna begin with just a very pale wash of my red. Just to, just to get some color on there so I can see. And I'm keeping my flower handy so that I can refer to it as I, as I go along. And I'm going to try to not talk too much today as I'm painting, but I have to warn you that I did have coffee and um, it was very strong bulletproof coffee. So um, I may not have, I may not be able to keep quiet for very long today. Anybody out there drinking this bulletproof coffee with the MTC oil? or the MCT, I should say, MCT oil. Holy cow, it's strong stuff. All right, so there, there's just a very rough, basic design. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the, the center with a little bit of that tone but then I'm going to um, add a little more yellow so I get um, some of this warm kind of orangey tone started. So there we go. And uh, a little bit on this stem. So I'm just mixing my blue and my yellow. And these, uh, these stems are quite thick and strong. They, they actually, if you look really closely at them, you can see that they have all these ridges. And I'm not sure. Let me see if I can get this in the camera. Um, there you go. You see those little ridges? They're really strong. So, um, so I'll want to get pick up on, on those characteristics a little bit later and I'm just going to let that fade away off the bottom of the page and just sort of disappear into nothing. All right and at this point while the while it's still a little bit damp I'm going to take a stronger mixture of my green with a with a drop of drop more blue in it just to give it a little bit of a darker tone as the shadow goes underneath the petals. And I'll, I'll also bring that down along the shadow side a little bit. And then I will let that dry. And uh, later, I'll be able to add some of those ridges to uh, give that, that characteristic to the stem. Oh, I see cookie. Yeah, cone flower, purple cone flower cookie. Um, I, um, I think they come from the prairies. So sometimes it's called the prairie cone flower. So um, it likes a lot of sunshine. It takes, a, it's a hardy and up to uh, zone four, if not zone three. And, um, and it just, it just grows, it's just an all around great flower. It also makes a very nice cut flower. So it really um, covers all the bases. It's beautiful, it's easy to grow, the wildlife love it. It makes a good um, cut flower. And it's an easy flower to collect the seeds from so that you can grow it again in the future. But it, it will, um, self-seed all around so the chances are you won't be able to 
or you won't have to do a thing. It'll just take care of itself. So um, I would I would consider this one of the the best flowers to have in your garden. The the seed heads, which are very large and very attracted, attractive to the birds, particularly the winter birds here where I live, also make for a very interesting winter garden specimen. So a lot of, lot of reasons to grow this particular plant. All right, so what I'm doing now is just, I'm just adding my next uh, darker tone. So basically the, these are my middle tones and I'm just kind of um, spreading the paint around a little bit, softening that transition. Okay, so there, there we go, and I'm now, now I'm going to begin to fill in some of these areas with additional petals. So basically, at this stage, I'm drawing with my brush. And the shape of the brush is actually doing a lot of the work for me. Because use, this is a what's known as a sable round which refers to the shape of the brush. So you can see that it's almost like a petal shape itself. So that helps to just um, easily make a, make a stroke, a single stroke that is petal shaped. So it's kind of a, um, you know, it becomes sort of second nature to you over time as you practice you just kind of automatically turn the brush to create the shape without even thinking about it now this um, I want to pay attention to the center of the flower you can see you can see how dark it is and you can see, hopefully, you can see all these beautiful little orangish, sort of magenta, orangish tones in the center. Okay, so it looks something like that. So I'm going to try to um, make a deep, rich red and yellow, mostly red with a with a warm yellow, and just increase the darkness here. So there it is getting it started. And then I'm going to add a little more red again while it's wet, just letting that wet pigment sort of mingle with what I just put down and you can see I'm starting to get that beautiful rich tone and then the very center is like a little bit of a depression where it gets a little bit darker so there's my center and um, just a couple more layers of color I'm going to go back to my red and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to pick out some details in these petals. 
that are, um, you know, they have, they have these little kind of wrinkles and ruffles. They have a lot of texture. And so I want to indicate a little bit of that, and I don't have to do it everywhere. I can add another one over here. And I'm continuing to draw with my brush as I go to get some of these characteristics. If anybody has any questions, please um, type them into the comments and I'll take a look in a couple of seconds to see if I can answer your questions. Also, if you're new, let me know where you're, um, where you're tuning in from. I'd love to know. And, um, let me know what you think. What's the temperature where you are? I know there's some pretty amazing temperatures going on across the United States and uh, and I hope that you are doing okay and that you're able to keep keep cool and I hope that you're able to uh, do a little painting along with me. Who's painting with me? Anybody or any of you interested in, in watercolor painting? Let me know in the comments. Oh, so Cookie says that she has lots of echinacea. Oh, and the orange ones. Yeah, the birds love the seeds. Cookie, it sounds to me like you are a bird lover. Um... The orange ones are gorgeous. Um, they for the ones that I have, the orange ones have not proven to be as hardy here as the um, the red violet ones, known like this one, known as the purple cone flower. These do better for me here, and um, and I don't know if it's because the orange ones are a hybrid specimen or selection. It could be, and they just, they just, um, they don't, they don't last more than a few years, but I do, do love them. They are stunning, and I wouldn't mind actually getting a few more of those. Um, yeah, and I think, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if there are a lot more different colors available because, um, because they are such popular flowers. All right, so, I'm, so what I'm doing now, I'm just finishing up. So because the, um, let me hold this where you can see it. So you can see I can add more color. So I'm going to increase the color of my center. I'm gonna make that darker, but I'm also going to add more color to my petals. And just sort of bring out that brilliant, Tone. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in a little bit more because I can see that I can add some more petals here. So I'm just, you know, working my way up. I'm not trying to go to the finish too soon. All right, just sort of getting my flower established. And then, of course, later when I come back to this, I'm going to create an entire border of these flowers going across the um, bottom pages of my, of my spread here. Okay, and so let's just put some of these sort of um, background flower uh, petals. These are the ones that are sort of curling away in the in the opposite direction. And then finally, I'm going to get that center 
nice and rich. So, so this is still damp. So I'm just putting a few drops of paint to let that spread. And then um, underneath the flower where the where that stem comes out, I'm gonna get that a little bit darker. And now I'm going to switch to my smaller brush. Okay, so this is the number four, and I'm just going to use that to um, paint a couple of these ridges coming down that stem. Just like so. And I'm and then I'm gonna take my yellow and I'm I'm just gonna glaze a little bit of yellow right over the top of everything. Alright, so that is how I would start working on a echinacea specimen and I'm just going to add it oops just a touch of darkness in the center there there we go and when these petals are a little bit drier I'll be able to go in and add some of the um, details of the of all of the pleats all right and and maybe I'll add some some leaves all right I think I think I need one more petal over on this over on this side so I'm just gonna darken up this one There we go. All right. Okay, so I'm going to check now and see if there are any questions. So please go ahead. Let me know where you're tuning in from and uh, if you have any questions at all. Here's the um, website address. And, um, and when you go there, please subscribe to Notes from Dandelion Cottage to receive notifications. And I will also be posting that link below here in the comments after the live video is finished. So let's see. I see oh, and I see Kit. Hi, uh, hi, Kit. She likes the wet on wet. Yeah, that's very effective. And yeah, and, it, and I'm starting to see some of the flower texture um, develop, but I could also go back when it's completely dry and do a little dry brushing on top, and that would help to enhance that. There's Vicki. She just came in from planting. Oh, Vicki, what's the temperature where you are? It must be kind of warm, um, unless it cooled off a little bit today. And yes, when you when you watch the replay, you'll hear me talking about the purple cone flowers. They are awesome. Cookie says she has yet to paint any of my flowers. Well, Cookie, now's your chance. And Cookie, Cookie is a member of the Watercolor Card Club, so you better get busy, girl, because we're going to be working on these flowers soon. If um, if anybody's interested in going uh, more into depth on learning how to paint flowers with watercolor, please check out the Watercolor Card Club where I uh, provide you with a monthly video that ranges from anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes. And um, I also provide reference material and we have a live Zoom where you can ask questions and we have a Facebook group where you can actually share your paintings for critique with an awesome group of people that are very friendly and very supportive. And, uh, and we've really gotten to be good friends and we'd love to have you join us. So check out the Watercolor Card Club. Oh, Vicki says it's 86 degrees out there right now. Well, that's, that's a little warm for sure. 
All right, well, I, I don't see any questions unless I missed one. I'm going back now just to double check. And there's Penny. Hi, Penny. It's been a little while since you've tuned in. Nice to see you. I hope your little friend is doing well. Um, all right. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to call that today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, I will also be posting the playlist below of all of the garden journal videos that I've been making. There's actually uh, quite a few of them now, so uh, you might really enjoy that. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I will be back here tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Paper Crafting Thursday. I hope to see you then. Stay well, stay happy, and stay creative, and I will see you next time.